do value statements and definitions. This guy right here. All right. So, what is a statement of value? We're going to first compare statements of fact versus statements of value. So, a value statement might be something more like, as you see at the top of the page, I like red more than I like blue. Or like we did on the do now, love versus happiness. Something like that. Whereas fact statements are things like the world is round. So what are some other examples of value statements versus fact statements? Um, the best, the best fruit is cherry. Cherry best. is the best fruit. Fruit equals cherry. And is that a statement of fact or value? It's value. Value. And Mamani, why is that a statement of value and not a fact? Because it's her opinion. Do you agree with her opinion? No. No. Mm -hmm. So that's that's an easy way. If you can disagree with the statement, then you know it's a statement of value and not a statement of fact. What's a statement of fact, Mamani? Um, choose the on your feet. What is it? Choose the on your feet. Choose the on your feet, yes. So those are, there's the distinction. So we just know that there's two different types of things. We have statements of fact and statements of value. These both exist in the world. And being able to recognize and make sure we're only talking in the value debate round specifically about the clash of values is going to be more important and not the clash of facts. They're, we should probably agree on the facts and then we apply those facts to the values that we come up with differently. So there's three features of value statements. The first is that value statements are concerned with what ought to be and not with what is. They're concerned with what ought to be and not with what is. When we say what ought to be, we mean how the world should look. So Simone would say everyone should think that cherries are the best fruit. Mm -hmm. Whereas Lamani would say, no, cherries aren't the best fruit, so why in the world would everybody, or should everybody think that they're the best fruit? And so it's some sort of a statement of what ought to be. This isn't, this is a, pres a prescriptive statement, not some sort of statement that is uh, just what is going on in the world. So it's not saying cherries are red. We all agree cherries are red, but cherries are the best fruit we all disagree, we may disagree about. Value statements are usually also larger concepts rather than specific everyday concerns. This means that values don't, are not dealing with the nitty gritty of what shade of red is the cherry, or whether or not what type of red is better than what type of blue. But instead, values are looking at the big picture and so saying, in general, reds are preferable to blues. And so this is going to be all shades of red, so whether that's candy apple red or cherry red or fire truck red or any other color in the crayon box versus every other color, sea blue and all those other kinds of blue in the crayon box. When you're talking about values, you're looking at all the blues and all the reds and separating them into two worlds and saying one is better than the other. If you're talking about facts, that's going to be looking at maybe, I think sky blue is better than cardinal red. And then you're going to talk about those two specifics. And so when you think about values, think of a bigger picture. Don't think of kind of the tiny nitty gritty. And we want to be debating about the bigger pictures, not about kind of one little detail and say, well, you know, this one person out in the world who abuses heroin in this really strange way, we should treat that person like public health and everyone else like criminal justice. Well, that might be an interesting conversation to have, but it's probably not where we should be focusing the debate around. And so that's kind of the key to remember. We're talking about the large concepts, not specific everyday concerns. And finally, finally, value statements are more subjective, whereas facts are more objective. So just as we talked about at the beginning, not everyone, not everyone sees uh, cherries as the best fruit. So that's a subjective thing. Different people will have a different view of something. Objective is factual statement, something that we know is true. How many desks there are in this room, how many people there are on the earth. We can have a good estimate and that's a fact. That's not something that's based on what I think and you think and we count differently. Counting is a fact-based thing. And so 
Whereas we want to be focused in our debate rounds as value debaters on subjective issues, not on the objective. And again, we want to use objective statements of fact and things that we can read as evidence and know are true. And we want to apply those things to the subjective things that we're talking about. So maybe when we're talking about the resolution we're talking about, we'll say, look, we know that there are three million people who are addicted to heroin in the United States, if that's the number. I don't know if that's the actual number. Let's say there's three million people addicted to heroin in the United States. And if we treated it as public health, that would better reach our value of individual liberty or of freedom or of utilitarianism or whatever value we decide we want to reach. And for those three million people, it's going to be a better world. And that's a better world for the United States, too. And so that would be the sort of big picture that we're looking at. And we're going to use the objective fact of there are 3 million people to help us evaluate how big a deal the value that we're talking about is. So that's the three different types of value statements. Now the next question we should ask is how do we support or affirm a statement of value? So in this resolution, we don't have a specific statement of value. We say how something ought to be treated, and so it's going to be based on different values. But if the statement was, I like red more than blue, or I think that cherries are the best fruit in the world, in those sort of situations, those are statements of value. And the way we support them is important because otherwise we're just basically going to come into the room and Lamani will say, cherries are not the best fruit in the world, and Simone will say, they are the best fruit in the world. Well, until we start supporting our arguments, then all we've done is just stood on opposite sides of the room and yelled at each other and not gotten anywhere. And the goal of debate is to try to come to some sort of consensus and an answer. So that's what we're trying to do with the value and the supporting a statement of value. So the first thing is we don't have to prove it true all the time. It does not have to be proven true all the time. So it's important, when, especially when we get to this resolution, and to all the resolutions we're going to debate. As a negative, you would love to be able to say, as long as I can point out one situation where we should treat the abuse of illegal drugs as a matter of criminal justice, I win. But as the affirmative, you should never let the other team get away with saying that they have to point one tiny little example of this one random guy who says, hey, as long as drugs are treated as criminal, I won't touch them. But the minute that they're treated as public health, I'm going to go crazy. Well, okay, so maybe there's the one guy in the world who says that, but that's not proof that with this resolution, the affirmative team automatically is going to lose. So you don't have to prove it true all the time. You need to just try to prove it in general. So it's important to remember, as we're in the debate rounds, that we aren't trying to argue with each other that this is an all-encompassing answer. This is the best answer we can get to at the time, at the end of the debate round. But the debate round is 45 minutes, so you aren't going to have enough time to come to every little tiny detail. Second, we need to prove it true as a matter of principle or in general. As a matter of principle or in general. Oh, principle. No, that's right. As a matter of principle or in general. So, the key here is that you're trying to say that red is generally better than blue. So maybe we say, you know, red birds are better than blue birds, and red fruit is better than blue fruit, and red cars are better than blue cars, and in general. But then the negative can't come up and say, well, again, I found this one little detail, or this one little time. You're saying, look, across the majority of situations, red is better than blue. Maybe not everyone thinks, or should think, that cherries are the best, but the greatest majority of the population does think that and thinks it's the best. And so while Lamani can say, well, I don't think that, Simone can say, well, even though you don't think that, I think that there actually is the general principle is that cherries are the best fruit. And so sure, there might be a few obscure fruits that are better, but generally we can say when we go to the grocery stores in America, of the fruits we serve in America, the best fruit are cherries. And so you kind of limit it that way. And so you're thinking in general principles. And finally, you want to prove that the value ought to be upheld in most situations. Prove that it should be upheld in most situations. What this again is saying is that if your value is human life, or in this situation, if it's liberty, and you're saying, look, we should, people should be allowed to make a decision, and if they choose 
to abuse drugs in the United States, then we should treat it as an addiction, and we shouldn't be trying to throw these people in jail because otherwise we're violating their ability to make free choices. And maybe that's the value. You're trying to uphold liberty and freedom. Well, if that's what you're talking about, then what you're saying is in these specific, in most situations, liberty is a good value, and we like people being able to be free to do things. And in the United States, we tend to have that bent in the United States that we like liberty. And so it's really valuable to be able to say, my principle should be upheld in most situations, even if there are some obscure ones. And so I think the most important thing to take out of this section of our outline is that we don't win by finding a couple little obscure angles where the facts aren't in support of the resolution. The key is to find general principles on your side or against the other side that can be applied. And so maybe you say, look, criminal justice is the way to keep our children safe. And children's safety outweighs freedom. And so you aren't saying that, look, there's one time where freedom is bad. What you say is, look, safety of the children is more important. We don't like the gang wars that result. And the criminal justice versus public health is not going to change that world. And so we say we're going to treating, keep it, treating it as criminal justice will protect children, and protecting children outweighs liberty interests. And so that becomes the kind of debate that you then have. And these are broad, overarching issues. They're principles that you can apply in general, because I think everyone in America would agree that there is a legitimate, fair debate over whether or not protecting children or giving people freedom should be the primary objective of the government, depending on the situation. And it doesn't have to apply all the time. There's going to be times where the government's going to say we want to protect the children, but obviously we also want children to be able to walk across the streets by themselves, because we could protect all the children by sticking them in little bubbles, and they'd be very protected, but they also would never get educated or anything else. And so we say there needs to be some level of freedom. And so that becomes a really interesting debate that we get.